So here we have the full length of a six acre field. And we've got the hedgerow where there's been rabbits, pheasants and everything coming out there this morning. So there's a lot of scent and I just want him to take no notice of that and go for the retrieve. Get out. So all I want him to do is do the, do the full length of the field, not drop his head, lift his head and get out to that bird. Full length of the field. So we could be here for a... There we come in, look. So there he is. Good distance this is for a 12 month old dog. Don't want to overdo it, but the confidence the dog's got now and the, and the, and the keenness he's showing me dead good lad perfect delivery into hand and the bird is really good no problem with the bird at all so everything is right and what we're doing we're perfecting this now it's before we move on to advanced training all right we got that basics we've got to get the basics right before we move on to advanced everybody wants to rush them i don't like rushing them i like getting them right i like them bonding with you being with you he's in there look he's happy to be in there look he's wagging his tail he wants to come in where before he was standing off a bit. He's beginning to really enjoy what he's doing and that's the most important thing. It's knowing when to say, I'm in charge, listen to me, be a good lad, and he'll trust you, love you, and want to work with you. He's not looking around to do other things, he wants to be with me. And we've conditioned him to do that. We've conditioned the dog to do that. He's a lovely dog, he's well bred, but at the end of the day, you don't want to take away the natural ability. The natural ability is, you can't put that in there. It's there, but you can destroy it. It's easy to destroy it. And that's what we don't want. We don't want to destroy that drive. Look at that obsession. If I put the bird out there, he wants to look for that bird. He's really keen. All his life, he just wants to work for me now. And that's, that's going to make life so much easier as a team, the two of us. He's going to work for me um, until I finish training. And then he's going to go and work for Margaret. But the obsessional behaviour has to be channelled in the right direction, direction. And it mustn't become too obsessional. And so what we're doing, we're working on sitting him up, making him stay, making him wait, putting my hand out, making him stay there. He's not supposed to move, not saying nothing. If he moves, we put him back. But we don't want to put him back. But if I open my hands, or I call him, or I use the whistle, and he'll come look. By opening my hands and using hand signals, or the whistle, or my command... And this dog is beginning to respond because he loves to work. He's doing it not because he's been forced to do it. He's been taught to love it and then shown a little bit of control at the right time. And this is why I like this dog so much. He's a lovely natured dog. He's got drive, desire, everything you want. But at the end of the day, if you don't train him right, you ain't going to have it. So that's Quill. Happy birthday, Quill. One today. So without the whistle in the mouth, I could be in trouble. So the whistle is always in the mouth. So I can correct things if they go wrong. I'm not going to give the dog a command to sit or anything like that when I shoot. If the dog moves, I correct it. Get out! Get out! Get out! I controlled it. It went in the wrong direction. Why did it go in the wrong direction? Because I put three birds out. And she saw which three birds I put out. And she went to the one on the left because the echo of the shot came across to the left. So where I pointed the gun, she did not did not take a straight line. Now I've got a choice. I can either put break the gun and point to her where I want her to go, or I can teach her to be, tr be gun-wise and go in the direction of the gun. And the gun is no different than the extension of the hand. And once the dog has been shot over a number of times, the dog learns that that is part and parcel of the job. So for instance, I'm gonna put another shot up. She's not supposed to move. Get out! Look where the gun is, look where she's going. In the direction of the gun, the, sh the, the, the echo went out there, look. So there's no handling. She's gone in the direction. She's not gone until I told her. She's dead. But she's listening to me. Come here. She's listening to me. She's, she knows the bird's out there, because I've put them out there. I'm teaching her that they're in the direction of where I want her to go. 
We'll do the same with the third bird. Not very far, sit up, not very far. Now, she's seen the shot. That's where the bird is. I broke the gun on purpose now. I'm doing something completely different for her that she's not had before to show her that I'm in charge. She's ready to go for it. She can't not be ready. Here we go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Into the wind. I just brought her into the wind. I'm showing her that I'm in control. She knew where it was. I took her mind off it and made her wait. Because I made her wait, she didn't go straight to it. Because she waited, I took her eye off it with a distraction. Now with the distraction, even though it's a scene, I'm going to line her up. Come here. Sit. Get out. Last there. Uh, last. Last there. Uh, holding her in the area. Last. Now, she's hesitant on that because it's a squirrel. She never had it before. It's a squirrel skin. And I only skinned it two days ago. So it's like, what's that? But she's got to learn to pick anything I ask you to pick, no matter what I shoot. So that's Lexi. Okay, in this situation, over the brow of the hill, we put a blind out. She doesn't know where it is. And what we're going to do, we're going to fire in the air. We're not actually going to fire to the ground to give her a guide. We're going to fire in the air. I'm going to send her, and I'm not going to handle her. I'm not going to move my feet or myself from where I am, if possible. I just want her to go out in the direction of the shot. Now, this is where I would line a dog up if she, doesn't, she hasn't seen it down. So, what I would do is this. Get out. And that's all I'd want to do, if possible. I wouldn't want to direct her. I want her to get out there and find it. And if she has to come take cover a little bit of ground, because I couldn't re I can't really see her, because she's on the brow of the hill, she's got to work it out herself. And so what she's doing, she's clever. She's come back into the wind, if you notice. And she's actually swept up into the wind and swept back into the bird. Because it's a blind. She doesn't know where it is. I don't know where it is because it's been shot over the brow of the hill. Dead. Good gear. So at the end of the day, we're, we're making the dog gun-wise, street-wise, if you like to call it, that she's streetwise, that she can handle all situations if put into them. And that's what we aim for, even in this weather. So, in this exercise, we have two birds out. She knows I've put them out. She's watched me, come back with me. And now I'm going to fire at both birds. I'm going to send her for the last, for the, sec, for, the, for the bird that I shoot at second. And what I want her to do is go out in the direction of the gun. I'm then going to stop her halfway out on the bird that she thinks that I wanted to pick. I'm going to ask her to pick the other one that's a lot further back. Right? And we're going to see if we can control her. Because she's got to learn that if she goes wrong on a shoot or at a trial, I can get myself out of trouble if I have to, if she's not gone for the right one. So here we go. Get out. Leave that. Get out. Get out. Right, she was right on that bird. And I controlled her, look. I kept her away from it. She had to listen to me and, and do what I asked her to do. Good gear. Sit down. Get out. So we're putting the control into her. I'm going inside, it's absolutely pouring it down. 
I'll come back out and hey, hold it. Here, here, here. That wasn't good. I like that in my hand. My fault. I bent down too quick because it was raining. I was just trying to get everything put away. So don't make too much of that. Dogs do go wrong. <laughs>